breathe. Not only have I demonstrated being too harsh and unruly in my last video, but also the capacity to put out work that falls below my own standards. Tell me if this one shows more calm and collected discourse. Mr. Lash, I do find it wonderful that you are able to travel, presumably without complying, to handle the matter nonchalantly, offhand, as if it were perfectly normal, no big deal, business as usual may be a key aspect in dispelling the illusion. Pandemic? What pandemic? Also, you are at no obligation to explain yourself or describe any of your activities. No one is. Let me briefly share some of mine, though. Over the past two years, I reside primarily in Minnesota, but also Wisconsin and Michigan. Flew to Arizona and drove once to Florida. I have no tangible experience how policies are actually enforced in places like Australia, Italy, Canada, or elsewhere that the media puts forth horror stories about. I suspect that both official and counter-narratives are exaggerating the truth, if they present it at all. Yet I will wager from my experience standing ground in America that we got it the most lenient here, even though there is widespread compliance. Each of the three states have been tyrannized by orders coming directly from the state governors, but each of them have similar exemption clauses. In each, the exemptions were listed in Section 8 of the order, basically stating that anyone with a physical, medical, or psychological condition that made it unreasonable to wear one was exempt. In practice, it came down to how strict businesses themselves enforce these policies, even depending upon the individual employees themselves. Most employees would not care if I didn't comply or they were too timid to challenge me, but all it took was one petty tyrant. When walking into a store with my face revealed, I would stroll past the front entrance which usually had a guard posted. Nearly every time I heard these words exactly. Sir! Sir! With those exact inflections. The first was startled and alarmed. The second, annoyed and demanding. I would tell them that I was exempt from their rules. Yet most of the time they disregarded my claims and I took my business elsewhere. A few stores, such as Target of all places, tolerated my non-compliance, perhaps knowing that even the fake law provided written exemption clauses, but they were mostly low-end, what I call ghetto grocers, for the lower classes. Cooperative food markets were unsurprisingly co-opted and strong on their Stalinist attitudes. Those businesses stopped receiving my business, and isn't, it, isn't that a reasonable solution? Remember, you have no rights. You have no right to receive service from anyone that, for whatever reason, political prejudice in this case, is intimidated by you. It may be a long haul or a short run before this slave-based economy finally dies, and wouldn't you rather have nothing to do with it before then? Yes, I rely on the system like most everyone else, but if it came down to the point where I was excluded from it for non-compliance, I wouldn't be surprised nor upset. It's not my system and any dependence upon it does more to cripple than it serves to enable. I've said before, convenience is the most expensive commodity. You pay not only through the nose in dollars and euros, but also in principles, values, and freedom. You have yet to see the final cost. I want to make another video going over the chain of events and details, when the policies were introduced, when they were redacted, reintroduced, and so forth. Till then, stay alert and take it easy.